Okay, part two, installing the Spark software. Um, a bit of license information before we start. Uh, I talked to Arturia's headquarters in France and this is the deal with your license. From your Spark license you can install the software on up to three machines. Okay, so that's really good. You can have a copy on your laptop and desktop if you have both. You can put a copy on your writing partner's machine. You can put a copy on the local studio machine where you work all the time. You know, you've got a bit of flexibility there. Okay. Okay, so let's get on with it and bear in mind that everything you're going to see here was installing the software at version 1.51. Okay, we've just moved up to version 1.61, but the principles that I'm going to show you now remain the same. Just follow these instructions and you'll get yourself the latest version of Spark flawlessly installed on your computer and you'll be up and running. Okay, so let's get on with it. So the first thing you need to know is forget the DVD. It'll probably be out of date and there's a hell of a lot of sample content that comes with the Spark, so you might think that you should install from the DVD to get all the sample content onto your machine, and then when you update, you'll only be updating a small program file. But actually, the update is an 800 meg DMG installer, which contains all the sample content and the program from scratch. Okay, so there's no benefit to using the DVD at all. So look, just do it how I'm going to show you now, okay? Okay, so forget about the DVD, just go straight to the Arturia website and on the top left here you see a menu called Shortcuts. Choose Updates and um, you don't need to be registered or logged into Arturia's website to do this. Okay, so when you're on the Updates page, scroll down until you find the Spark. There it is, Spark Update. And at the very top of the list, you'll find the latest version for Mac and Windows. Well, I'm on Mac, obviously, so I click Mac, and I begin to download the installer, the latest version at the time of this review, 1.5. And um, as you can see, it's quite a large file at 800 meg, and look at the speed I'm getting. I've downloaded this about five or six times, and I've never got much over 300k a second, um, no matter what time I've downloaded it. And so you're looking at an hour download time, roughly but you just have to download it, so download it. Okay, so once you've downloaded the installer, you just run it, and it's the usual thing, you agree to the license, and uh, then you're presented with this destination panel where you can not only uh, choose not to include some of the components, but you can also choose a different disk destination for both the library and the application other than the primary Mac disk, you know. But I left them both on the primary Mac disk. And then you just run the install. And da 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 da, da there you go. Successful installation. Okay, after installation in your applications you'll find a folder called Arturia and inside that there'll be the Spark program and the Spark MIDI Control Center program which we'll come to later in this review. So you just run the Spark software. Okay, when you run the Spark software for the first time you're presented with this um, authorization panel and uh, it says to fully operate this software please enter the authorization code provided in your online user account and the words online user account is an active link so you just click that link that link takes you through to Arturi's web page my account section where you sign in or if you don't have an account click here to create one and then you just fill in your details um, there's no need to Wait for an email to arrive after you've submitted this application for an account, uh, you know, and then get the email and click on a link to finish setting up the account and all that. There's no need for that. You just fill in your compulsory details, including your uh, country, then optional details like do you want the newsletter and your birth date and what OS and software you use and, you know, all that other kind of marketing stuff. And then you submit. And uh, that's it. Your sign up completed successfully. I say no need to click on a link in an email to finish everything off. Just log in. Put in your email address, put in your password, and log in. And the page comes back, and there is your account with your profile at the top, which you can modify at any time. 
and further down there's a section called my registered products and you need to add the sparks of registered products so you click the add button so you hit add the page reloads and there's a drop down list you drop down the list and you choose the spark there it is just there not the Spark VDM or any of the Spark expansion packs. So you select the Spark and then you put in your serial number and your unlock code that came with the product and hit submit. So you hit submit and the page reloads back to your default account page showing your profile at the top and down below under my registered products you now see the Spark listed along with the serial number and the all-important activation code you need to run the product. So you just grab the activation code, go back to your program that's sitting there waiting, paste in the activation code and authorize. And your Spark is up and running. And then the only other thing you have to do is update the firmware, which unfortunately I can't show you because I accidentally did it off camera. But it's really, really fast um, and easy, and obviously your Mac has to be online. Um, every time you boot the Spark software, if the controller is connected and, and switched on, then the Spark software detects the controller. And if the firmware is out of date on the controller, a little message pops up on the Spark software saying that it's out of date and offering to update it. And uh, you just click OK, and there's a little pause of about 5 to 10 seconds and then another message pops up on the Spark software saying that the update of the firmware was successful and requesting you to reboot the controller and you reboot the controller and that's it, it's all done. So that's the right way to do it and that's the end of this section. Um, you can move on now to part three, first time firing up of the system, what's it like to trigger, what are the sounds like, what kind of things can it do, general appraisal. Okay.